Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, TPC Virtual Leadership Summit 2015. This uh, seminar is entitled Leadership and Challenging Relationship and I'm Bernardo Venturi. Uh, we don't know, we don't have the pleasure to work vis-a-vis, -vis, so we spend a few seconds describing who I am. Um, I'd like to define myself as a global politics and conflict resolution expert. Uh, my specialization is in this field, so conflict resolution, also called conflict transformation, and peace studies and practices. Um, usually I'd like to combine research, training, field work and advocacy, so I have a quite hybrid profile and uh, usually I bring in my teaching, my training, my field experience, my policy work and uh, they come back to the field or to advocacy with uh, some uh, theoretical and uh, research experience on content. So I try to fertilize both my, my experts. And I will try to do the same today, starting from my professional experience, from concrete examples. Um, so, for this webinar, you need uh, some writing material and uh, a quiet time and space uh, to be present. Uh, so, let's have a very quick check-in for today's sessions. How present are you for today's sessions? Are you quiet enough? Do you have time enough? This, this webinar will last approximately 30 minutes. And what do you need to get the most out of this session? So, welcome on board, um, let's also define your learning objective, so let's think before starting into your the objective that you have in mind, why you choose this webinar and why you choose to spend half an hour with me. Great. Um, Let's move to the aims of today's session. At the end of this session, you will have a, a basic understanding of a low-profile approach to relational leadership. Low-profile approach is an expression that uh, I use to define my way of working on leadership. I will uh, explain you later on. Then, you will have an understanding of the issues related to leadership in conflict or sensitive relationships. Finally, you will acquire some tools for managing uh, some of your conflicts or sensitive relationships. Right, let's move to the content of uh, this webinar. Firstly, I will start describing my relational challenges at the workplace as a leader. Then I will move on describing uh, Conflict theoretical, the conflict theoretical background related to those challenges. So I will try to analyze deeper uh, why, what is the background, what are the theoretical uh, issues <coughs> underpinning my, my approach. Finally, we will work uh, and reflect on tools uh, to apply this uh, relational, this. Uh, um, this approach to relational leadership and conflict resolution. Okay, so let's start. Uh, as I said, we try to be very concrete, so with uh, with examples. And I would like to start uh, from my working place. Uh, currently, I'm director of Rondine. Rondine is an international hall of residence. Uh, uh, hosting uh, international students, so students from different parts of the world. Uh, 
And more concretely, Rondine is uh, what you see in this picture. It's a tiny village uh, based uh, in Tuscany, in Arezzo, south of Florence. In this tiny village, students are living together, learning together, and learning to be getting ready in order to be potential future leader in their own countries. But the peculiarity of this place is that these students are coming from different cultures and different conflict areas. So they get ready uh, together, working together with uh, who is called an enemy people in their own country to get ready to work for peace, to work on conflict resolution and to do all of that together. So that's a great great challenge of this of this place. So um, in Rondine there are several conflicts in a nutshell. What do I mean with this expression? Basically um, the, the students are living first of all the contradiction, the problems and the dynamics within this triangle. This is an ABC triangle. What does it mean? It means attitude, behavior, and contradictions. Uh, as person, they come with their attitude, I mean with their values, with their hopes, and so on. And uh, they behave, they have a behavior. So they have an external attitude, an external way of living. And, uh, of course, this can uh, bring to some contradictions uh, that uh, should be in some way managed, resolved, transformed, and so on. As I said, they are from different countries, they are from different cultures, and they are from different people in war, in conflict among them. Uh, Israel and Palestine, US and Pakistan, uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan, Dagestan and the whole Russia Federation, and so on and so forth. Um, so they live uh, interpersonal dynamics within uh, the, the international hall of residence. But at the same time, they, they are coming as person, but as a people as well, bringing with them the whole uh, their own tradition, uh, the, what they listen to friend, with friends, uh, with their parents, what they learn in their families, and so on. So they bring uh, a bag sack with a lot of staff, and they, and they learn to dialogue, but at the same time it's not easy because they, they feel these waves these waves of conflict from uh, on their background. So at the beginning, some of them are saying, well, everything is fine. It's no problem for me to live, uh, for instance, with the Palestine or with the person, Lebanese, Lebanese person. But, but then they, they are facing some challenges. Um, and these challenges, I define, they are from uh, the society, they are from their family, they are from their regional level, from the Caucasus, Balkan, and so on. And there are some, some global challenges that they bring inside as well. So I like to define this as uh, conflict waves. And about that, I would like to have uh, a first reflective exercise with you all. Um, so I invite you to, to focus uh, on your, your workplace and to think, uh, first of all, what are the ways that you see from your own leadership position? So with your colleagues, partners, do you see any waves from far away? beyond the surface, beyond the what, uh, beyond the behavior, beyond the, what the people are saying.
And how are these waves uh, challenging you as a leader? How can you manage? How can you transform these waves? And finally, what is the impact that they have at the relational level? So what is the impact that these ways have in the relation on the behaviors? Right, thanks a lot. Let's move on to my leadership approach around. So I said what around in is, and then let's spend, I'd like to spend some more, more minutes describing what I'm doing. So basically, I have two, two tasks, two responsibilities. The first one is on the educational program, so I'm providing training, the seminars, and organizing the external lectures every week um, so all the scientific educational program and then I have the second important task quite challenging it is to facilitate dialogue exchange and deep understanding among the students I identify seven basic steps that I take and I would like to, to share these steps with you. Um, firstly, my guide and leadership has a strong relational approach and a low profile. So I try to work uh, with the students without staying in the first line, facilitating the process, uh, but with the participant as protagonist. I like to I, I try to stay on, uh, on the background. Secondly, I work uh, with the participatory process, deciding together mental themes uh, and keeping the group involved step by step. Uh, so for instance, in training, of course I bring contents, but I, uh, I bring a program, but I try to shape, to profile, this content with the group. Um, for instance, right now we are working uh, on a program specifically on the conflicts from the, the, the areas of the students. So the students are working in work, small working groups uh, based on the regions, so from the Balkans, Middle East, Caucasus, and so on. And um, uh, I provide them some tools, for instance the tools of conflict analysis, uh, but then I decide step by step how to work in these groups, and we define the methodology together, and that's a way to keep the group uh, involved and committed. Thirdly, um, it's very important to stress dialogue and mutual understanding. Uh, so to facilitate dialogue and mutual understanding, uh, for instance, uh, an example that we mentioned, this example, uh, it's very important to think that to the tools, to the methodology, uh, in order to have a full participation and uh, a full understanding. Then uh, I pay great attention to interpersonal relations. Uh, Active listening, which uh, is a, a key point to be present, to listen to each person, and to understand not just his behavior, as I said before, but also his attitude and the contradictions that can rise up from, from attitude and behavior. Then uh, motivation. 
motivation is a milestone as well. Um, what I want to say with motivation. Motivation is uh, basically to see the whole picture, to feel that your work is part of the longer journey. So that's especially true for our field of work, which is peace. Sometimes peace is a buzzword, something very generic. But if you feel that uh, you are making something with few people, with an association, uh, facilitating dialogue, understanding, reconciliation, and so on, um, probably you are not changing the whole world, but you are changing uh, a small part that is part of a bigger, larger picture. And this is uh, re-motivating, is giving a meaning. Then um, I have to keep in mind that I'm working with uh, future leaders. Uh, and if I'm working with future leaders, I want uh, that they work today as leaders as well. So they are not passive, but they are part of this program, actively, committed. And not just uh, in the program, but also in the governance, the governance of the organization. Uh, it's very important for me that they understand what Ronnie is doing, uh, to understand the different uh, parts, the different leagues, and so on. So to keep them involved as leader uh, today as well. Finally, I try to be discreet but present. To be discreet, to have this low profile, of course, doesn't mean to be passive, doesn't mean to be absent. It means to be uh, one step back, but very active. Always ready, listening, always ready, facilitating, always ready to support the processes, and so on. So let's have uh, a second reflective exercise. Uh, this time we will focus on uh, conflicts and sensitive issues. So thinking to your usual setting, how do you work on sensitive issues as a leader? For sure you have some experience uh, and try to, to, to think to one or two examples of it. Your mind. Right. Uh, what about motivation? Is it important for your activity? Do you have some values and some reason why? How do you shape that? How do you shape your motivation? Okay, and final question. Have you never tried to empower some process, stay in the background? Do you appreciate this leadership style? Right, thank you very much. Uh, let's move to our second part of this webinar that is uh, about the theoretical background. Um, let's divide it about, let's divide it into three parts. The first uh, is on cooperation and relational leadership, the second on, on empowering, and the third on thinking and acting out of the box. 
So concerning cooperation and relational leadership, here the point is that usually, um, or sometimes let's say, co leadership is considered something that uh, uh, is getting you far from other people uh, because you are acting as a leader uh, and cooperation is something else. Well, uh, in my view, in my experience, a good leader is a leader able to create uh, good relationship. Is a leader able to cooperate, to listen, as I stress many times, and in this way you can reach greater, greater results with your colleagues, with your partners, and so on. I'd like to have a quick exercise on, uh, on cooperation. Uh, so I'd like to ask you your opinion. How do, you sh how do you see this relationship between cooperation and, uh, and leadership? Try to think of that a few seconds. Probably you already have found out some examples and therefore I'd like you to, to ask uh, how is cooperation strengthening your work? And finally, how do you rate you as a leader in a scale from 1 to 10 on cooperation. Well, 1 of course is very low, and 10 is very high. Okay, thank you very much. Let's move to the second uh, point of this theoretical background. Uh, this is about empowering. Uh, you have the power, yes indeed. Uh, as you can read in this pic, if you think you are too small to have an impact, try going to bed with a mosquito in the room. Uh, a mosquito is very small, uh, and it's creating a lot of troubles staying in our room by night. So uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, my idea of power is that each of us has a slide of power. And you can use it or you can give it to someone else, to your boss, to your colleagues, to some stakeholders. Uh, but basically we have the power. And, uh, and that's a very important step to be realized. Uh, in that way, when I was talking about work of high leadership, uh, that's also uh, the idea is also to stay in the background in order to empower the other. I said I would like to have students uh, uh, within the processes, to have students involved as protagonists. Uh, so I would like to facilitate the, the growth and to facilitate this empowering process. Uh, I would like to give them some tools, uh, to provide for them some understanding, some insight, but then the process the, the and the challenges are directly of them. It's not my, my task. Uh, so empowering, that's a very important, important point. And I would like to, to spend uh, some, a couple of minutes uh, reflecting on, uh, on power and then with empowering. So how are you an empowering leader? When you act as a leader, do you feel that you are empowering the people you are working with? 
or there is a relation of dependency. And what do you do to empower others? Okay, thank you very much. Let's move to the third uh, theoretical point. Think and act out of the box. Um, a leader is a person able to think in an innovative way. It's a person able to shape new ideas, new approaches, and to act consequently and to accept the consequences that his or her acting may have. Um, in this way, uh, of course, when we are talking about human rights, peace, conflict resolution, for some students it's very hard. For some of them uh, uh, it means uh, to have a lot of troubles back in their own countries. Trying to imagine that uh, uh, a person from a village, for a person uh, for an Azeri person, it's impossible to have uh, uh, an Armenian friend on Facebook. So if you get a friend from Armenia, you are uh, stigmatized from your own society. Uh, so if you want to do this choice, you want to be open to dialogue, uh, you are thinking out of the box, you are listening to new ideas, you are shaping a new future, but at the same time, you are accepting the consequences and you are acting uh, with this strong uh, uh, idea, with this strong understanding. So, um, I invite you to think uh, to have a small exercise also on this, on this point. Uh, and I would like to ask you firstly, in what situation as a leader have you been thinking out of the box? Right, so probably you already have in mind some situations. And I would like to ask you what made it possible? What did you do concretely? Finally, what are the risks, if any, of thinking out of the box? Okay, thank you very much. We are almost at the end of this webinar um, and I uh, would like to sum up the main idea that we are discussing with. Um, so, I was firstly discussing about discrete leadership and how discrete leadership may be a way uh, stay in the background of leading processes empowering the others without uh, being the first line. Then I was discussing about motivation and how keeping in mind the whole picture uh, may give, uh, may provide a strong inner motivation. Thirdly, I was focusing on human relation and how empathy is a key element, how a deep understanding and active listening. Um, is uh, very important for a leader. Fourthly, uh, I discuss about participatory process and how it's important to have the people committed, involved, and uh, to have uh, uh, 
the different parts in the process that they feel part of the same process, not just uh, as uh, customers. Then it discuss about cooperation uh, and how cooperation is a point of strength of relational leadership and how relational leadership is empowering for us and followers not just uh, leading from behind but providing tools and empowering the people. Finally, I invite you to think uh, and act out of this box uh, in order to lead with new ideas, new understanding and uh, to act consequently. So, uh, before concluding this webinar, I would like to have a very quick learning checkout and action planning. And action plan, so let's start from what do you bring with you from this webinar? What is in your backpack from this half an hour together? Yeah, it's a shame that they cannot hear you. You have an important and interesting point for sure. Um, so finally, I do invite you to, to think to one concrete time and place where you could apply the insight to learning on relational and leadership. And doing that, I invite you to focus on how and why. So, thank you very much for staying with me and I wish you all the best for your future steps.